Enjoy this next act, folks. There she is. Look at this beautiful woman. Please welcome to the stage. She's our last speaker for the day. It's Lee Chantel. Hi everyone, thank you David. Thank you everyone today for Grace and the volunteers and everyone for coming. I'm speaking right on the dot of seven. <laughs> and, <laughs> and thanks for the um, great enthusiasm and energy of that performance too guys. And um, I'm talking today about ethics beyond the plate. So come a bit closer. I'm, I'm, I don't bite unless you want me to. So come, come closer, come and listen to what I'm going to talk about. So I thought I'd talk about my background first and why I'm doing this. Um, I'm a published author, I'm a speaker and a consultant, and I go around Australia, around the world, and speak about a variety of things, including vegan lifestyle. Um, I've been a vegan for 20 years in January, before it was cool and on trend, and when people used to think we're pretty crazy. And, um, I've run a website called vivalavegan.net for over 10 years and there's a decade's worth of information on that website. So there's articles, blogs, um, how-to videos, lots of videos, interviews and I've released quite a few books, print books and e-books as well. Um, my latest book is a book about a vegan athlete, so there's over a hundred interviews with athletes from all over the world and various disciplines in there. And yeah, that's my fourth book and that took four years to create and it's always exciting when, you, when your creation comes through. And um, so 20 years ago, when I first became vegan, it was a hell of a lot different than it, than it is now. There weren't many vegan options whatsoever. You were lucky if you got soy milk in the Woolworths or the Coles the supermarkets. And you know, the biggest excitement I used to have was finding like dark chocolate or carob chocolate at a health food store, you know? That was about the excitement you got. And um, nowadays, there's so many other options. There's so many vegan restaurants, so many vegan businesses, so much vegan food. And sometimes I still have that sort of scarcity mentality where I'm like, oh, there's a vegan cake, I have to have it. I just don't know when I'm gonna get vegan cake again. And it's probably gonna be tomorrow. But, you know, I've still got that in my head that, you know, you have to have that, that vegan goodies whenever you can get it. And today I want to talk about ethics beyond the mainstream, beyond the plate, because I think that the mainstream media in particular and online focuses a hell of a lot on um, dietary aspects, what people do or do not eat in a vegan diet, focuses on a lot of fitness and um, weight loss. So today I just want to talk about things beyond what you do or what you, what you do not eat as a vegan. And um, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but you know, vegans become a bit of a buzzword lately. So the past maybe five years, maybe can blame it on um, in on um, Instagram. It started around then, and um, there's a lot more people that know about veganism or know aspects of veganism. So when someone is primarily promoting something that's related to say diet, I would personally call that plant-based because there's so many other things that veganism is that do not relate to just food. And um, you know, the internet and mainstream media focusing on these things is I think diluting the core ethics of the vegan movement. And I think we need to be speaking about these things more and educating more people that there's so many other things that go along with being vegan than just what you do or do not eat. So today I'm gonna to talk about a few different things. You may or may not have heard words like ethics, intersectionality, oppression, privilege, effective communication and compassion. And I don't have that much time. I normally talk about this for an hour or so, so we won't really get into depth about things. But um, I just want to talk about um, a few things and maybe some things that we should think about in the future, maybe some questions we can ask ourselves. 
And there's so many reasons why people become vegan. And this can be health and fitness and diets and reversing some health issues that they have. It can be ethics, environmental issues, it can be human rights issues, social justice issues, feminism. It can be many, many different things. And also a lot of people care about um, animal welfare and animal rights. And that's why I went vegan originally. So um, I went vegetarian first when I was in school, when I first made that connection between the life that existed and the death that I was about to consume. And um, I became vegan a couple of years after when I learned about the dairy and the egg industries. And I went vegetarian because I didn't want anyone to be harmed or anyone killed just for me. And when I learned about the dairy and the egg industries hurting a lot of animals and, you know, a fate worse than death sometimes, I chose to become vegan then. And um, I, so I went vegan due to animal issues and animal ethics. And there's, but there's so many reasons for people to become vegan. And I just want you to be open to learning new things. So just because you're vegan for a particular reason now, I hope you can add more reasons to that because I think it's important to um, get people to become vegan or plant seeds for people to learn about veganism. But it's very, very important that we keep people being vegan. So we need people to stay vegan because there's a lot of people that stay vegan for a year or so, find it challenging or find some sort of a, um, a reason that they don't continue. And we don't want this to be happening. So I want you to think about not necessarily what things are important to you or the reasons that are the most important to you, but think about what other people might be passionate about or what would make them make some changes. And you know, veganism is really great. It's really important. It's really awesome. But to me, it's just one step. And it's one step in creating a compassionate world. And I really want you to do your own research. Not, don't just believe people just because they're the loudest or they have the most followers or, you know, do, do things that get them attention. You know, do your own research. Work out the things that you think are right. And um, has anyone heard of the term intersectionality? No, a few people. So in case, in case you're not aware, intersectionality pretty much means just linking social justice issues together. So it's finding how these things intersect, as in link together. And it's working out how we can use all these things and work together to make the changes that are needed. And so I originally went vegan for the animals, but I've also been involved in feminist environmental movements and I care about these social justice issues now. So over those 20 years I've learned from other things and I've just added all of these things into my vegan toolbox. So um, I just wanted to um, talk about a few different aspects of veganism and ask a few different questions. So I'm just going to break it down into different sections. For example, health. So nowadays, there's a lot of um, packaged food, processed vegan food um, that's out of the just the four vegan staples. So the fruit and veg, the um, nuts and seeds, the whole grains and the fruits and vegetables. So do you think if... Um, if veganism, do you really think that veganism should be promoted as a um, healthy diet anymore, for example? I want you to think about these questions as I'm asking them. And do, what do you think, some people promote veganism as a cure all. Do you think that people should promote veganism in that way? And um, what about promoting veganism in a flexible way and showing people that there's many different types of vegan diets? So, you know, I see a lot of people, in particular young um, girls, that come to veganism because it's a restrictive diet and they use it for maybe some dietary issues that they have. And they're using this restrictive diet under the guise of healthy eating. So we want people to see that there's many things that they can eat and enjoy that are healthy. And um, we want to show that there's different types of vegans too. There's different things that people enjoy and they like. And that doesn't mean there are less vegan just because you eat cupcakes or you don't eat cupcakes. And um, I want to talk about the environment. 
have, you know, as vegans, the food that we're eating does not contribute to a lot of the things that an animal-based diet does. But have you thought about where the food you consume comes from? Have you thought about the growing processes? Have you thought about the pro pro producing processes, the packaging processes? Have you thought about the food miles of your food? Your, f your favorite vegan food might come from the US or the UK, for example. Do you think that's good enough? What about um, people, you know? Uh, people are animals too. We tend to forget this all the time. And people, especially online, people are so horrible to each other. And have you thought about the, the vegan clothes you wear, the vegan shoes you wear? What about the manufacturing processes of these things? Have you thought about how these things happen, how they're produced? Are people getting paid a fair wage, for example? whether it's at your favourite restaurant or whether it's making your favourite um, vegan products. What about females' bodies? Do you think it's okay to use one type of female's body to promote another, another female's body? And we need to be getting more vegans shown in the, in the mainstream media in particular, because a lot of them at the moment are white, female, middle class. So we need to show there's so many more different types of vegans, because there is. We just don't see it that often. And what about some social justice issues? So um, some, of the, some examples of some social justice issues would be like feminism, um, racism, ableism, speciesism, and these are all like issues that can intersect as well. We can all work together to stop these sort of things happening. And, um, you know, we can learn a lot from other movements, like environmental movements, feminist movements. We can learn so much from other, other movements. And I'd like to encourage people to get involved in other movements too and learn from people. I think a really good example would be the LGBTQI community. And, you know, there's a lot of people who support and are allies of that, of that movement, whether or not they're gay. And I think we can learn a lot from them. How do we invite other people who may or may not be vegan to help us be allies in our movement? How do we use these things to bring the movement to the next level? Because we need to be getting to the next level. And you know, one of the things I'm most um, passionate about is how do we make things more inclusive for everyone? So every single person feels as though they can be part of our movement. And I don't know if you're aware about privilege, and most of us aren't really aware of our privilege unless it's taken away from us. There's so many things we don't understand. And I just want you to be mindful of other people and be compassionate, and just because you can live in a certain way doesn't mean other people can as well. It doesn't mean other people have the same choices as you. And we can always learn and listen from other people as well. And we seem to forget that everyone likes to hear themselves talk. Not many people really like to listen to other people and learn. And in regards to privilege, there's a few things. Like some people cannot actually make the choice to not eat particular foods. Some people can't make the choices to buy new vegan shoes, to buy new vegan products, buy new vegan clothes. Some people don't have access, or some people can't afford to go to vegan events, to go to vegan restaurants, to support vegan things. Some people mentally and physically cannot actually go to protests. Some people have issues with being around members of the opposite sex and don't feel as though they're okay in certain situations. They don't feel they belong in certain situations. Some people don't feel that they are able to speak or that their opinion is valid. And this is one of those things about, we want it to be an inclusive area. We want everyone to be able to speak up in whatever way they feel is the best way. And um, we don't want to use other minorities as props for the vegan movement. This can be like black vegans, for example. And I don't think we need to commodify anyone 
just to advance the vegan movement or the animal rights movement. Because there's people that speak up that we can let them speak because they've been in a certain situation. They know how certain things feel. We don't need to be saying things on their behalf. We can just use what they say. And this, you know, an example would be how people use certain words to explain things like concentration camps in regards to animals. And, you know, it, if you've been in that situation, then, then you can use those sort of terms. But I don't think that a lot of people should use that, those terms as much as they do. Which brings me into being mindful, and in particular of language, because language is very, very powerful. And it has so much ammunition, I guess. And, you know, you can really change someone's life with the words you use. You can, you can empower someone and you can really hurt someone with words that you use. So please focus on being more positive instead of negative and focus on, you know, planting seeds instead of just trying to change people. <laughs> And um, Thanks, online, I see a lot of people using racist language to try and get, you know, the certain things in the vegan movement across. And this would relate to things like, you know, say, Taiji and the dolphins, China and dog meat, um, Middle East and live, live export, for example. So just watch the language that you're using and how you're interacting with people in regards to this. And I've noticed... These are all like examples I'm giving that I've seen many times online. And a lot of people use trigger words, like I was saying before, like, you know, concentration camps or slave, even the word rape. All these words trigger words that someone who had maybe those sort of things happen to them might find very offensive and might be really upset about you using them in a flippant way and just trying to promote veganism. You have to be really careful. And I've noticed a lot of people giving unsolicited health advice to people. Um, the veganism will cure everything. And, you know, it doesn't. And, you know, especially the vegan diets that exist now and the vegan food that exists now, 20 years yeah, ago, just, yes, definitely, could help with a lot of things, but it depends on what you actually eat in your vegan diet. So I would really like you to focus on planting seeds of compassion and educating people. I really want you to focus on learning from other people and trying to learn something new and trying to think about different ways you can promote things. Um, I really would like you to care about other humans and care about um, how your words, how your actions might affect someone else, and especially online. I give a lot of talks about online, um, being effective online, and um, how to speak online, and um, top 10, I have a top 10 tips of um, online etiquette as well, and my top tip would be to act, don't react, because everyone seems to react all the time, and it creates a lot of drama quite constantly. And I really think that all systems of oppression need to be changed. And this is why, I mean, you know, all these social justice issues can link. Because all these areas, people are oppressed or animals are oppressed. And we can all learn from each other to get these changes happening. So really, I'd like for everyone to think about some of the things I've mentioned today. And I'd like you to be nice. I'd like you to focus on kindness and compassion. I'd like you to think about things like, you know, you might be the only vegan that someone comes into contact with. You might be the only vegan someone meets. So think about these things. And I, I know so many people who've said to me, oh, I would have gone vegan 10 years ago if it wasn't for that guy that I met on the corner and rah, rah, rah. So just be really, really conscious of how you are um, acting towards people. And you're an example of the, you walking or walking, talking example of the whole vegan movement, whether or not you like it. So just keep those things in mind. We need to focus on the things that connect us to each other. It's so easy to just put people in little boxes and think of the others, but we're all connected. We're all made up of the same stuff. And um, we're not all exactly the same. There's always things we can learn from each other, but um, focus on what connects us.
And um, 20 years of being a vegan, my biggest tip I can give you is lead by example and be consistent. That's it. Lead by example, be consistent. And um, please focus on kindness. Please focus on compassion. And I hope you've learned something today. Please do your own research. Please find out some more things about it. And um, really, I'd like for us to all be the best vegans we can be. And I'd like us all to start from now. So, my name is Lee Chantel, and you can find my vivalevegan.net website. And I'm across all social media channels as well. And you can also find my Lee Chantel tell social media channels and connect with me there if you like and um, I hope you've had a good day and learned stuff from various stores and I will hand over to someone else thank you very much Lee Chantel folks